this. This is the leg of my tripod. So I think I'm going to start with my lip products because I have a significantly less number of those than anything else. So the first thing we have in here is some Carmex, you know, which I don't even use, so I don't know. I don't even know how old this is. Then I have one H&M lipstick, which is in the color Daydream Cream, and it is this kind of mauve purple pink color. I have one ColourPop Brown Sugar lip gloss. I have two Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. One is Velvet Blush and one is Atomic Cherry. You know what? Oh, here it is. I actually have three. So I have Velvet Blush, Atomic Cherry, and Love of My Life. And here you can see these. So these two are more of the sheer. Sorry. These two are more of the sheer formula. And then this one is the matte one. Then I have two Rare Beauty matte cream lipsticks, and these came in a mini set that I actually got spontaneously. So the red one is Inspire, and the brown one is Fearless. I would actually get a full size of one of, not necessarily the color, but I would get a full size of this lipstick because it's a really nice formula. It's a nice soft matte. Oop. You can see, you can probably tell from the way it's sitting on the wand. I have two other lip glosses aside from that ColourPop one. I have this Ulta Beauty lip oil. The texture is fine, but it's way too flavored, I guess. Then I have this Fenty Beauty Diamond Milk Gloss Balm, which I hate a lot. The glitter is very gritty and the formula is very sticky. Then I have this ColourPop Crayon in Waikiki and uh, it's fine. It's a good color. I hate the packaging because as you can see, everything wore off of it anyways. I have one lip liner from Bodyography. Then I have this lip balm from NARS, and it is the birthday lip balm, which is also bad because it has, like, nothing going for it at all. I have two Revlon lipsticks. One is Rose and Shine, and the other one is Cherries in the Snow. Then there is this Velvet Ink, I guess, like, lip stain from Peripera. I got it at uh, TJ Maxx. And it is this really pretty corally shade. And then there's this liquid lipstick in Wonder Boy from ColourPop. And I really love this formula. This probably has the closest formula I've seen to the Rare Beauty lipsticks. And then there is this Maybelline Superstay 24 a 24 hour color I guess which I also do not like because it is way too drying and lastly here's my one Pat McGrath lipstick which is in she's so deep and again I really do not like it the formula is eh I got it on like their $10 sale they did a couple years ago So as you can see, I don't really care for many of my lipsticks. Now we're going to move on to my other eye products, which is a big chaotic mess because it has eyeliners, mascaras, and other stuff. I don't know. So let's dump this out. So let's... Let's start with mascaras first. So I have this L'Oreal Paris Voluminous Original Mascara in Burgundy. I like the wand. I had one of these in black and it smudged horribly, so I just use this now if I need like a color mascara. Then I have this CoverGirl Clump Crusher, which I heard great things about, but I got it in brown. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I have already dark eyelashes, so it really doesn't do anything for me. Then we have this Katie Cat Eye from CoverGirl, which is the Katy Perry and CoverGirl thing. And it is in this blue color, which I like to use when I'm doing like fun makeup, but the brush is really weird. Like, I don't know who signed off on that. Then I have this Maybelline Snapscara mascara, which I really like, and I also just found out it was a tubing mascara, which explains why I like it so much. 
um, in the sense of like it doesn't smudge or flake. And I have this Marc Jacobs one, which is obviously in black, and I really, I really like it. I like the brush. I like the formula. It, it, uh, it flakes and smudges to no end though. So I only do it if I'm wearing it for short periods of time. And then last, I have this, uh, oh god, L'Oreal Air Volume Mascara Waterproof. And this one is fantastic, actually. The wand is weird, again, it doesn't really, I mean, you would think it wouldn't grip onto lashes that well, but it, it does. It is definitely waterproof. I wear this when I'm teaching all the time. Oh, I'm like that, because I found two other ones. Okay, so there's this little Milk Kush Mascara sample, which I'm honestly gonna throw out right now, because this is not good, and I didn't pay for it as a sample. And then there is this telescopic mascara from L'Oreal. So honestly, this is a really good mascara for longevity, but it, the bristles are so short, the wand is so tiny, that it doesn't do anything for my lashes. Now I have four brow pencils. So I have this e.l.f. one, which really is not good because my brows are too thick, so this just makes me look like I have Groucho Marx brows. Then I have this Wet n Wild Brow Sessive pencil. And then I have these two e.l.f. Ultra Precise brow pencils, and they are the same one I just bought backups, I guess. I guess this is kind of turning into a declutter because I'm looking at these eyeliners and some of them can definitely get the boot. So there's this Wet n Wild Pro, Pro Line Fill Tip Eyeliner. I have a couple of these, I think, yeah. So about a year ago or half a year ago, I started to want to try to get into liquid liner because I just couldn't for the longest time. And I kept buying Wet n Wild liners because these were mostly for practice. So I wasn't worried about the longevity but they are bad. So I'm gonna throw them out and I have finally settled on this NYX Epi Epic Ink Liner. And I also have this Maybelline Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner, which is not very waterproof. And also, like, what is this? What's going on? Did I just take the stopper out? Really stiff brush, not flexible at all, not good. Then there's this All May one, which unbeknownst to me, was actually glittery gray, which like, why would you even want that? I don't know. And then another All May liquid liner, which just has the weirdest unflexible, I don't know if you can see that, it literally barely bends. I guess I should have organized this better before I started doing this, but there's also this liquid white NYX pencil, or liquid liner, sorry. So now we have all my um, crayon pencil liners. So I have this one from Colourpop, it's this burgundy, it's gotta go, it's old, it doesn't even have that much left in it, and it's dry. Then I got this Wet n Wild recently to actually replace this one, so I don't know why this one's still here. This Elf in Coffee, well this liner's good, I've had it for years, it has to go. But this Wet n Wild one is great, it's very creamy. Then I have a bunch of these LA Girl ones, which I got because I wanted colorful eyeliners, and they're very cheap. Then I have this NYX Epic Wear liner stick in, I don't know, probably like milk or something. Pure white. And then I have two Glossier Play eyeliners, which I really love. I wish they would bring these back. Then I've just got some miscellaneous eye stuff. So I have this eye crayon from Wet n Wild. It's actually a multi-stick. Then I have this liquid shadow from Sydney Grace which is like a small indie brand, I don't know. Then I have this primer from Too Faced, the 24 hour shadow insurance, and it is okay. I'm gonna think I'm gonna try the Milani one next because I don't have $22 money to spend on, a, on an eye primer. Then I have this Glossier Sky Wash in the shade Pebble, and it is horrific. It's really bad, it does nothing. I mean, I could have picked a better color but I am pale, and that is pretty horrendous. In a similar vein, I have this Lid Star from Glossier in the shade Lily. Now this one picks up more product, and it's definitely prettier on first look. But if you try to move it or like blend it in any way, it will just disappear and the sparkle doesn't stay. Then I have this e.l.f. Liquid Shadow in the color Ocean Eyes. And this one's pretty, it's one of the better formulas, liquid eyeshadow formulas I've tried. I haven't tried that many, but I don't use it and it's also old, so I need to throw it out. 
Then I have my one standing ColourPop single shadow in the color Slave to Pink. And I don't even think they sell this anymore, I could be wrong. But it's this really pretty fuchsia purple shade, or fuchsia purple pink shade <laughs> that really sparkles. And then lastly for the eye stuffs is this Essence Melted Chrome eyeshadow. And this one is really pretty. This is in the shade Too Iconic. And it really is like some sort of melted metal. It kind of has a putty formula. Um, but yeah, you can see it's so shiny. I love this. And I don't wear it that much, and I don't know why, but it's really pretty. I guess I'll just mention these two right now. I have two setting sprays. I have the Milk uh, Hydro Grip one, which is nice, and I have this ColourPop All-Star Face spring, Setting Spray. But moving on to face stuff, you can see there's quite a bit, but I don't think it's like overdone. I'm gonna start with blush because this reflecting one is annoying me. So we have this e.l.f. blush in the color Radiant Peach. And it really is Radiant Peach. It's a nice corally peach shade with a golden shimmer to it. Then I have this Patrick Ta blush in the shade She's Passionate. But you can see I use it quite a bit because there's a pretty decent dip in it and the logo is pretty gone at this point. Then I have this Soul Body, which is like a sister brand of ColourPop. I have their Shimmery Body powder in warm gold and this one I definitely use as an eyeshadow because it is way too dark for me. Very pretty though. I have this NARS palette which is really just the most beautiful watercolor packaging. And then lastly is this liquid blush in Little Lilac from M Cosmetics and the color is super pretty. I really like it. It doesn't show up this purple on the face but the one thing I hate is this stupid dropper. It makes the whole thing feel very cheap, and it also doesn't work, so someone's not doing QA testing. On to highlighter and bronzer, I guess. I have this ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Lunch Money, which I've had for years. I actually bought another one but because I thought I was going to use this one up, but I uh, never did. Then I have this Glossier Paloscope highlighter, I think it's called, in the shade Quartz. Do Effect Highlighter. Um, I like this. I don't think there's that much product in it. I actually got two sent to me by accident and I gave one to my sister, so. It was actually $11 if you want to count it as a BOGO. And then I have this uh, NARS bronzer in the shade Laguna, which was from the Sephora birthday gift with that other lip balm. And you've definitely seen this if you have seen my Trying Teacher Makeup Routines video because this is the only bronzer I own. Then I guess I will count these as highlighters. I mean, this is like a primer. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow. And my sister gave this to me. And I really couldn't tell you what it does, honestly. It's really expensive, but it doesn't... I mean, I'm, I guess it maybe adds like a sheen, but it... Wow, well, I got shaky hands. I guess it maybe adds a sheen, but it's so negligible, it's not even worth it. But I just keep it because it's expensive. And then I have this Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter Glow thing. All of the lettering rubbed off, which is kind of annoying because it's so expensive. For some miscellaneous stuff, I have this ABH Brow Freeze Styling Wax, which I got um, maybe back in May, maybe? I don't know what I started saying. Then I have two ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundations because I thought I was going to be done with this one and this never came back in stock. So I was like, I'll buy it when it comes back in stock. So I did. And then COVID hit and I stopped wearing foundation. Then I have two powders. I bought this one because I, for the love of God, could not remember that the Stay Matte was a Rimmel product and not a Revlon uh, product. And I thought I was going crazy. And last but not least, we have this section here, 
and this this is my concealers and foundation so i have this elf flawless brightening concealer i mean i think my problem with concealer is not necessarily the concealer itself but my under eyes because they have such fine creases and then i have this kevin aquan concealer that i bought after a huge fiasco with my senior photos then i have this giorgio armani luminous silk, silk foundation from uh, my sister again <laughs> and this is in the shade number three we are pretty much the same color so we're both uh, very pale and very yellow and then i have these two mac um face and body foundations this they rebranded it so now it's studio radiance this was the lightest shade before they rebranded and you can see there's quite a difference So we have finally hit the last bit of my makeup and that means eyeshadow palettes. So I think, let me count actually. I have 13 eyeshadow palettes. These two are singles palettes, but I just counted them as one. So I have this Natasha Denona Mini Lila palette, which was on sale at Sephora for a very long time for like $12, so I ended up getting it. And in theory, it's very pretty, but the formula uh, just kind of sucks. Then I have this Rowan Beauty 1111 um, quad. And this was originally, I think, $40. And I definitely did not buy it for $40. I bought it, I want to say, for $18 on last year's Black Friday at Sephora. Then I have this Urban Decay Soundtrack Aughts eyeshadow palette. And this is the newest one to my collection. I just bought it on a whim at TJ Maxx. Uh, they are really sparkly. Even this uh, red one is really pretty. I know it's like a matte with shimmer in it, which most people don't like. Then I have this Celestial Divinity Quad from Pat McGrath in Fleur Fantasia, and it is very pretty. My favorite shade is actually this one. It's this light lavender shade. I think most people would say this one. I really haven't even used that one, which really shocked my friend, honestly. So now we're moving on to big eyeshadow palettes. And this is Paws Beauty, and I th this was like a like an indie brand. I think they're defunct now. I honestly couldn't tell you. So these ones are really, really pretty. The colors are super pigmented, and like they are super soft. I'm barely touching them, and they're very pigmented. Then I have two of these nine pans from ColourPop. I have this Blow and Smoke palette or Smoke Show palette. But this was a gift, and it is such a pretty eyeshadow palette, especially this one. This one is stunning. Then I have this brown sugar palette, which was a collaboration, which I wasn't even aware of. I just thought it was pretty. This one I love. This is like my go-to. I think this is the eyeshadow palette I wore for my senior pictures. My only problem with this one is this chalk shade kept falling out. Like, it kept crumbling, so one day I just decided to completely wipe it out. I guess I'll keep going with the color pop. So I have this Disney Collection Midnight Masquerade palette. Honestly, I swear to God, did not think I was going to buy this, but I just went to Ulta one day with some friends and decided to pick it up. So I don't know what kind of money I think I have, but... And the last color pop palette I have is this Golden State of Mind palette, which is very beaten up and they don't even sell anymore. This was a gift for my mom, and I think this might have been one of the very first eyeshadow palettes I ever had. It's all shimmers and sparkles and it's really stunning there's um i think there's like three different formulas in here if i had to guess there's metallic there's like super shiny and then this is probably like a precursor to a super shock shadow in a palette that they do now okay finally out of color pop now i have this kkw beauty palette which i hate the packaging I know I sound really negative. I'm just realizing that. I do like my makeup. I like the shimmers in here. The mattes are nice. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is that they have these two browns here. And they are essentially the same shade. One just has a negligible amount of glitter in it. And now we have The Beast. My Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. But this palette is really just 
so beautiful. And I mean, I don't, every, anytime a mauve or a pink based palette comes out, I always just look at this one because it really kind of covers all the bases, huh? Okay, now we're in to single shadows. So for a while, I wanted to try a lot of colors and a lot of different formulas. So I went on the train of buying single shadows. And honestly, I kind of regret it a little bit. This one is my colorful one, which has the colors in it, obviously. And then this one is my more neutral one, which I don't think you can see everything in here, but you kind of get the point. I prefer... Like, these are super pretty. I'm not even gonna lie. I just prefer a palette, you know? I don't know why, but I'm just not the kind of person that can build an eyeshadow palette with these singles and be happy with it. I want something full and complete. Like, let's take, for example, this palette. I can totally make this palette with things on this side like i'm just looking like this whole row and this yellow could basically be this palette but um there's just something more interesting to me about this palette than any of these now if i'm looking for something specific like these iridescent shades yeah i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna use them like that's super pretty but i just can't and they're they're so expensive that's another thing i just can't Put the money into it. I don't know. So there you go. That's my makeup collection. It is a lot of makeup and I am trying to buy less. But honestly, a lot of this makeup was collected two or three years ago or even past as you could see i was talking about things back in high school and when i say high school i mean like freshman or sophomore year so i really am not buying that, that much makeup uh even though my mom seems to think i am this is also the makeup that i use to do those uh teacher makeup routine videos too so you can see why it's kind of limited in what i have i only have two concealers like two different types of foundation and i have a pretty limited set of lipsticks, whoa, which is over there. <laughs> I know this was kind of totally not related to anything else I do here, but it was just something I wanted to talk about. And I think this is also a kind of realistic amount of makeup. I mean, definitely not this. This is not a realistic amount of makeup, but it's stuff that I've collected for several years. And I mean, this a lot of this stuff is older, but just because it's older doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of it. Like, I don't want to use single shadows anymore, but I'm not going to just throw them away, you know? Anyways, let me know if you have any teaching, college, or I guess makeup content <laughs> that you would like to see me do. And I will see you back for something new next week, maybe.